This guide is about a bird who lost her way and found herself as a doctor in another universe. And when she woke up, she was a free-to-play character on your team. Considering that she's the only free healer, I figured it'd be good to make a guide on her, so uh, here's that. Lots of people are wondering about Natasha's best build, if she should use speed, if she's better or worse than Bailu, and more. So today, we're going to go over all of that. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure to let YouTube know they don't suck by hitting the like button and subscribing for more Starreal content, because it really does help me out, you guys. Also, I go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, so if you want to come see me test things out for these videos, the link will be in the description. And with all of that being said, my name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Natasha. Natasha's entire kit revolves around healing your team with uh, toys and a grenade launcher. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on here. Her skill is a single target heal based off of Natasha's max HP that activates once on cast, and it heals up that ally again once a turn for about two turns. A lot of people underrate the extra healing over time you give them the skill. It is really solid for sustaining a tanky character, even if the number doesn't look insanely high. What makes Natasha's skill stand out, though, is that it has a built-in cleanse with her Soothe Trace, which allows you to remove debuffs from your teammates. This doesn't matter much early on in the game, but when you have damage over time debuffs on your team or if a character is frozen or imprisoned, this cleanse can save you from imminent death. Natasha's ult is where the bulk of her healing is though. It's an AoE heal that affects your entire team and heals for a portion of Natasha's HP plus a flat heal on top. The benefit here is that the scaling is pretty decent as is, but the cost of her ultimate is only 90 energy, which means that she gets her ult back incredibly fast and you can emergency heal once every two to three turns depending on the content. The nice thing about Natasha is that because her ult cost is that low, you can use her basic attack frequently enough to generate skill points for your team. Sure, you will use her skill a fair bit, but at high investment, she is less greedy for skill points. It means you can run some other greedier characters. Innervation is her talent, and it basically makes Natasha heal more if allies are below 30% HP, which can be super helpful in a pinch. And lastly, her technique has a 100% base chance to weaken enemies when you enter combat with it, which makes enemies deal quite a bit less damage to you for a turn. In some high level content where enemies attack you first, this can save you. Her other traces are pretty good too, one increases her outgoing healing by 10%, and the other increases her skill healing duration by one turn, which ends up being a huge help to your team's overall sustainability. Now one thing not a lot of people think about with Natasha is that because she's physical, she has one of the best break effects in the entire game. Bleed is based on a percentage of the enemy's max HP, meaning that regardless of enemy stats, they will be hit with a hard damage over time if Natasha is the one to break. She is an amazing unit, and I think that a lot of people undersell her for Bailu, and I actually do want to take a minute to talk about that because there's been a lot of misinformation going around between the two characters. I see a lot of people talking about Natasha versus Bailu because they're the only two healers in the game right now, so I wanted to give you guys a comparison of where each one is strong. First off, I asked someone who helps me with some math to graph out max healing output for both Bailu and Natasha, and this is the result. This is making similar assumptions for both characters, but also includes Bailu's Invigorate heal that gives heals back to characters when they take damage. So don't worry, we're accounting for their entire kits. The only thing this chart doesn't account for is the damage reduction that Bailu has, but that only factors into healing needed, not so much healing actually output. Unless you get into effective HP and stuff, but we don't care about any of that right now. For level 80 characters with talent level 8, healing bonus, speed, HP, and energy regen relics, this is around the healing you can expect to get with either character. As you can see, Bailu does outheal Natasha, but what's worth noting is that Natasha in a free-to-play setup is actually not that far behind. Something you should know, especially if you've played Genshin Impact, is that eventually you reach a point where you don't actually need as much healing as the unit is able to put out. So in a way, Bailu is kind of like Chi Chi, where she heals so much that it's almost redundant, and it means that even though Bailu can heal more than Natasha, that healing isn't always necessary, and that Natasha is still a good shoe in for a lot of content. When it comes to raw healing output, Bailu is going to be better a lot of the time, but it's also worth thinking about their utilities, like Bailu having damage mitigation and a revive, and Natasha having a cleanse. These utilities are different, you'll use them for different kinds of content, and the argument could be made for either character to be better at different times. One major thing to note about Natasha is that she plays really well with Fire MC. A lot of Natasha's kit and her Eidolons give her extra benefit when healing allies at a really low HP amount, which can seem really sketchy because obviously you don't want your characters to be in range of imminent death. But Fire MC's shields, though they are weak, have a very high uptime since they refresh often, and Fire MC can also reduce ally damage damage taken by 15%. 
meaning that it's a lot more likely for your characters to survive in a lower range of HP, which then means that Natasha's kit can get more value out of playing with Fire MC. Teams that feature March 7th also might not need Natasha as much since she also has a cleanse on her skill. That's not to say that Natasha shouldn't be run with March because I actually ended up having to use them both in things like Simulated Universe, but it's just something to keep in mind that Natasha's cleanse becomes a little bit less relevant when other characters on the same team have it. With so much of Natasha's benefit being her cleanse, there's an argument to be made for not needing Natasha on any team that already has one. This means that hyper carry teams that utilize Bronya may not want Natasha as much as Bailu because one, Bronya has a cleanse, and two, Bailu has better overall healing output, and you won't be running a preservation character. With that said, in this extremely specific scenario, most of the time you don't want to use Bronya's cleanse on characters unless you absolutely have to, so Natasha is still a good unit either way. So these aren't really hard set rules because different content has different debuffs for you to worry about, but it's something to think about if you have both Natasha and Bailu, I need to figure out who goes on each team. Bailu's gonna heal more, Natasha is going to heal less but still heal more than enough to keep you alive, and Natasha has cleanse, whereas Bailu has damage mitigation and a revive. They're just different characters. But hopefully this answered some of the questions you have about the two. Luckily, Natasha is incredibly easy to build. Early game, you just give her as much HP and outgoing healing bonus as you can. Around TR 40 when you could start farming though, Passerby of Wandering Cloud is going to be your best set option since it increases your outgoing healing by 10% on the two piece. The four piece is just a bonus, but right now there's no HP or speed two piece set, so you'll want the four piece Wandering Cloud to give you that extra skill point. There's an argument to be made for two piece shooting meteor as well, and that can be a decent choice as long as you have at least least two of Passerby of Wandering Cloud. One other super strong set that I haven't mentioned yet is Eagle of Twilight Line. Now this set is a little bit more niche, but on Natasha you can get a lot of value with it. Basically the wind damage doesn't matter at all, but the four piece is going to make it so that you move your action forward by 25% whenever you use your ultimate. And on Natasha you're going to be using your ultimate a lot. Essentially by taking this set you are getting rid of some healing that you would have with the Wandering Cloud set, but in exchange you're going to be generating more skill points over time because Natasha's going to be able to use her basic attack more frequently after her action gets moved forward. It's a bit more niche, but I didn't want to leave it out. For stats that you're going to be looking for, this is also really straightforward. You're going to want outgoing healing on the body, speed on the boots, HP on the sphere, and energy regen on the rope. Outgoing healing ends up being a better scaling stat on Natasha than HP percent, and when it comes to speed boots, the reason is so that you can take more actions with Natasha to generate more energy and an extra skill point or two over 8 cycles of combat. The sphere is the throwaway stat slot, so we want that to be HP percent so that Natasha can heal bigger numbers, and the rope wants to be energy regen so that we can get Natasha's ult even faster. If you have enough healing, you can go fizz damage on her sphere, but the damage difference is pretty small, and I personally don't recommend it. Now, as far as her planar ornaments go, you'll want to use Fleet of the Ageless, which is a set that increases your max HP while also giving your entire team an 8% attack increase for having over 120 speed, which you'll have by default for using speed boots. Fleet is just too good of a set to have, and it's better for her than other set options anyways, so absolutely farm that one. It's not really up for debate, it's just the best one. So once again, that's going to be outgoing healing on the body, speed on the boots, HP on the sphere, and energy regen on the rope. Your best set is Passer by a wandering cloud and your best ornaments are fleet of the ageless and now that you know what to build on her let's talk about her light cone Abundance characters actually have pretty solid options for light cones, even if you're free to play, and Natasha can take advantage of almost all of them. Her best option as of making this video is going to be Time Waits for No One, which is going to give you a massive HP and outgoing healing increase, while also having a high HP main stat. It also dishes out some damage based on the healing that you do, which can add some extra total damage output to your favorite team. I highly recommend it. Post Op Conversation is her dedicated light cone, and it's pretty strong for the extra energy regenerate and outgoing healing bonus from her ultimate. It has high HP base stats and is one of her best options. But outside of that, you have Warmth Shortens Cold Nights. It's a Battle Pass Abundance Cone, and it's an amazing option for her because it has high base HP, increases her max HP by 16% at S1, and also gives allies bonus healing based on a portion of their max HP. It's not going to be game-changing amount of heals, but it's a great choice for scaling Natasha's healing values in the late game. Personally, I've found a lot of success with Cornucopia, the three-star light cone that also has healing bonus on it. Since it's easy to superimpose to max, you get a ton of healing 
something out of it, and it also has the same base HP stat as a lot of the four star light cone options. I highly recommend this one because even though it is a three star, it has some of the highest value for abundance characters. Shared Feeling and Quid Pro Quo are also both great options for her as well, with Shared Feeling giving healing bonus and a tiny bit of energy on skill, and Quid Pro Quo giving a random ally energy every turn. Quid Pro Quo is free to play and craftable in the Forgotten Hall shop, and at max, it can actually be argued one of Natasha's best light cone options just because it helps batter your team over time. Perfect timing is also good just because it has healing bonus up to a max of 15%, but you won't ever see 100% of it. I know I basically listed almost every single light cone, but Natasha isn't super picky about cones because as long as it either has outgoing healing or HP bonus, it's gonna be a solid choice. In case you have Eidolons or are thinking about getting some, here's basically what they do. First, Eidolon gives her an emergency heal whenever she's below 30% HP after getting attacked. This only works once per battle, but it can be a lifesaver if you misplay. Her Eidolon 2 gives her ultimate a continuous healing effect that'll heal up allies for one turn after her ult is cast. The main issue is that this only applies to friendlies at or below 30%, so you'll have to be pretty close to death to even get the benefit. Eidolon 3 is basic attack and skill level up, which increases her healing output. Eidolon 4 is a very important Eidolon in my experience due to Natasha wanting to be an ult bot. Basically, whenever she's attacked, she regenerates 5 energy, which means that she gets her ult a lot more frequently. E5 is an ult and talent level up, which is great for her healing output overall, and E6 is a damage-based Eidolon that gives her physical damage based on her max HP. This one I actually found to be a decent help for her personal damage, even though it isn't incredibly high. Natasha's most important Eidolon is 4 in my opinion, since in my experience it helped me get ult up a lot more, though I would also argue that Natasha is perfectly functional and strong without any Eidolons at all. As an overall unit, I cannot stress the value that Natasha brings your team enough. She is such an amazing character, and so much so that even once you get 5 star abundance characters, you will still be using Natasha later on in the game. I highly recommend you build her regardless of the status of your account, whether you're new or an older player, because she's going to bring a lot of value, be easy easy to play, easy to build, and her cleanse can save entire runs of SU and Forgotten Hall. Anyways, if you guys have enjoyed the video, as I mentioned before, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content. I know this video was a little bit shorter, but there's less to talk about with Natasha because she is a really straightforward unit that just gives you a lot and doesn't require a lot on your end. I test a lot of stuff on Twitch, so if you want to come hang out over there, feel free to go click the link in the description. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.